Today is day eight of Humbled by His Presence, titled The Threshing Floor. Our opening reading is Micah chapter four, verse 12. But they do not know the thoughts of Yah, and they do not understand his plan, that he has gathered them as sheaves to his threshing floor. A simple fun fact that you guys can kind of look up is that the threshing floor that we hear about in scripture is a place of renewal and a place of bringing forth and a place of ingathering. The temple that we know of in our scripture was actually built on a piece of property purchased by King David from a man named Aruna, often called Arnon in translation, who was a Jebusite. I don't know if many of you knew this, but the term for the land of Jerusalem came from the root of Jebus. And it happened during the second millennium BC. And the mountain, um, also known as Mount Moriah, was used for the growing of barley and wheat. And you can see this in 1 Chronicles chapter 21. Do you guys know actually how David was able to inquire or acquire this land and how he inquired of Arna to um, purchase this land. I'm actually going to read to you guys First Chronicles chapter 21 because it gives us a direct relationship to the reading for today and how as Yah is gathering in his children to the threshing floor, there is a process of removing that old person and the restoring back of the new. And we are often provoked and tempted by the adversary away from the presence of Yah. And in disobedience, we are chastised. And the threshing floor is a place not only of chastisement, but the place of renewal and restoration. First Chronicles chapter 21. And Hasatan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. And David said to Joab, and to the rulers of the people, go, number Israel, from Beersheba unto Dan, and bring the number of them to me, that I may know it. And Joab answered, Yahuwah makes his people a hundred times, so many more as they be, but my master the king, are they not all the master servants? Why then does my master require this thing? Why will he be a cause of trespass? to Israel. Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab, wherefore Joab departed and went throughout all Israel and came to Jerusalem. And Joab gave the number of the sum of the people unto David, and all they of Israel were a thousand thousand and a hundred thousand men that drew sword. And Judah was four hundred, threescore and ten thousand men that drew sword. But Levi and Benjamin counted he not among them, for the king's word was abominable to Joab. And Yah was displeased with this thing, therefore he smote Israel. And David said unto Elohim, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing. But now I beseech thee, do away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. And Yah spake unto Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and tell David, saying, Thus saith Yah, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So Gad came to David and said unto him, Thus saith Yah, Choose thee either three years famine, or three months to be destroyed before thy foes, while that the sword of thine enemies overtake thee, or else three days the sword of Yah, even the pestilence in the land, and the angel of of Yah, destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. Now therefore advise thyself what word I shall bring again to him that sent me. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait, let me fall now into the hand of Yah, for very great are his mercies, but let me not fall into the hand of man. So Yahuwah sent pestilence upon Israel, and there fell of Israel seventy thousand men. And Elohim sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying, Yahuwah beheld, and he repented him of the evil, and said the angel that destroyed, it is enough. 
Stay now thine hand. And the angel of Yah stood by the threshing floor of Ornon, the Jebusite. And David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of Yah and stand between the earth and the heaven, drawing a sword. And his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders of Israel, who were clothed in sackcloth, fell upon their faces. And David said unto Elohim, is it not that I it is not I that commanded the people to be numbered? Even I it is that have sinned and have done evil indeed. But as for these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand I pray thee, O Yah, my Elohim, be on me and on my father's house, but not on thy people, that they should be plagued. Then the angel of Yah commanded Gad to say to David that David should go up and set up an altar unto Yah in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. And David went up at the saying of Gad, which he spake in the name of Yahuwah. And Ornan turned back and saw the angel and his four sons with him hid themselves. Now Ornan was threshing wheat. And as David came to Ornan, Ornan looked and saw David and went out of the threshing floor and bowed himself to David with his face to the ground. Then David said to Ornan, Grant me the place of this threshing floor, that I may build an altar therein unto Yah. Thou shalt grant it to me for the full price that the plague may be stayed from the people. And Ornan said unto David, Take it and take it to thee, and let my master the king do that which is good in his eyes. Lo, I give thee the oxen also for burnt offerings, and the threshing instruments for wood, and the wheat for the meat offering. I give it all. And King David said to Ornan, Nay, I will verily buy it. For the full price, for I will not take that which is thine for Yah, nor offer burnt offerings without cost. So David gave to Ornan for the place six hundred shekels of gold by weight. And David built there an altar unto Yah, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings, and called upon Yah, and he answered him from Shamaim by fire upon the altar of burnt offering. And Yah commanded the angel, and he put up his sword, and again into the sheaf thereof. And that time, at that time, when David saw that Yah had answered him in the threshing floor of Oren on the Jebusite, then he sacrificed there. For the tabernacle of Yah, which Moses made in the wilderness, and the altar of the burnt offerings, were at that season in the high place at Gibeon. But David could not go before it to inquire of Elohim, for he was afraid because of the sword of the angel of Yah. I think there's a great parallel between what we read in day eight and David transgressing against Yah, causing calamity amongst the people. And then Yah, because of the obedience of David and his willingness to stop in his wickedness, change his heart, go before the threshing floor, not only doing the work of sacrificing, but the work of also sacrificing self in order to show true deep transformation in the face of death he stood before yah not fearing death not fearing destruction but letting obedience guide him through and through i believe that we are the generation who stands with death on one side doubt of those around us on the other and obedience before us, and we're choosing obedience. Just as David stood and sacrificed burnt offering and peace offering, which caused Yah to stay the hand of the angel that was sent to destroy Jerusalem and destroy Israel, is the same way that we in this day are coming before Elohim with our heads bowed, with our hearts contrite and broken before him, and asking that he thresh us and reveal the seed within, the thing that he has put inside of us, that he brings it out and he brings it forth and begins to nurture it as a tender plant so that we can each bear fruit for him, continually bringing forth new life and renewed faith and renewed belief in the fact that Yah is our redeemer and he will do what he said he was going to do. Stay the hand of our enemies. Stay the hand of destruction and redeem us and place a place for us to go to 
to worship him in spirit and truth. I hope day eight, this day of grace and this day of redemption really resonates with each of you. And that as we are journeying to the culmination of captivity and the culmination of our individual trials and tribulations, that we look at how Yah has stayed the hand, stayed his hand from destroying us and has given us space to be threshed on the threshing floor before him. And when he sees that we have completed and done what is good and righteous, that he will cause the angel of Yah to put his sword back in his sheath and that Yah can then welcome us in to his comfort. Shalom.